Okay, well, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Um, and I guess you were able to read this really tiny print on some of the signs I put out. <laughs> um, so this is, um, I hope you all are here for the Affordable Housing Committee meeting, because <laughs> there's three other events in town. <laughs> so you can leave now if that's not what you're here for. But um, we're really thrilled to see all of you um, come. Um, I am the Lisa Papazian. I'm the chair of the Putney Affordable Housing Committee. And the other members of the committee are um, not all here, but some of them are. Pip Master, raise your hand. Mike Merowicki, who's not here. Francis Temple. Josh Laughlin, who's not here. Kim Foltz. Oh, I'm sorry. He's right here. He's not here. He's not here. Raise your hand. Kim Foltz, who I think is not here. Um, Mal Herbert. Um, Kate Bowen. Uh, Mark Schleffer who may not be here yet, um, Eva Bondin, Callan McCullough, who's our new member, and me, Chair. So um, I just wanted to make a couple of just sort of background remarks. What is affordable housing? You may all know, but it just, to, just to start, it's defined as simply um, housing is affordable if it's cost the rent or the combination of mortgage, insurance, and tax do not exceed 30% of um, the annual income of a person or family. So that's sort of the basic rule of thumb. And um, it can be created to be more too affordable for very lo lower income people um, by subsidies of taxes, <coughs> grants, tax credits, grants, and other low, in low um, interest mortgages and stuff like that. But that basic rule of thumb is people should not spend more than 30% of their income on their housing. Um, the need for affordable housing has been recognized in the town plan for a number of years. Um, and the historic, um, in, in 2008, the select board created the Putney Affordable Housing Committee. Um, and it, we spent um, some time initially doing a needs assessment and developed, we had a planning grant and we toured uh, affordable housing developments in other towns and just tried to educate ourselves on what the needs were in Putney and what was out there, what was, what was possible and what might be a great thing for Putney. We presented those results in a community forum in 2009 and it showed that Putney did fairly well meeting the needs of, for elderly affordable housing, but not very well at all. Um, that is with units at Noise House and Putney Meadows, but not very much at all um, for non-elderly housing. There was clear demand. There, no, there were no permanently affordable units at that time. Um, and we worked with Wyndham Windsor Housing Trust in 2013 <coughs> starting and, and uh, briefly on and off um, uh, as they developed a new affordable housing project in Putney and um, they opened it, it was at the um, Plants House on Old Depot Road, the blue building with the big columns, uh, opened in two last, last August. Last August. Mm -hmm. um, and thanks to them, we have Putney's first 11 um, permanently affordable units for uh, families and non elderly. Um, and it's fully occupied, and um, I think there's quite a demand for those units, and they're beautiful. Um, and now, um, very recently, the um, Select Board and Wyndham Trust asked us, the committee, to work with them on providing community feedback and support for a new project they're considering in Putney. So we're very excited to hear about that more this evening. Um, just, we're also pursuing other goals as a committee, um, such as basically trying to um, look at ways that we can increase the affordability overall of Putney housing. Um, and that includes not just developing new housing, although we, we are going to be researching a little bit about can we develop our own housing project or work with others, um, but also things about you know, making home ownership more affordable. And there are a lot of existing programs, uh, such as Shared Equity, which is a, a program run actually by Wyndham Windsor Housing Trust, home repair programs, um, support for elders to, to remain in their homes, and creating accessory apartments are different ways that we've looked at, and there are probably more, for just helping people uh, be able to afford their, their own homes or start to be able to buy one here. Um, so that's basically what we're doing, what we've been doing, what we are doing, and um, 
the recent needs assessments that, that Wind and Windsor Housing Trust has undertaken for their, both of their projects confirm that the need is still very much here, even with the new 11 units, the need in Putney is still very much here. Um, so, uh, and I think Connie will tell us more about that specifically later. So I'm really looking forward to hearing everyone's questions and response to this new project, which looks very promising. And so I want to hand it off to Connie Snow, the Executive Director of Windsor, Windsor, Windsor Housing Trust. So yes. thanks so much, Connie. <laughs> well, thanks. Um, so thanks. Thanks to Lisa and the committee. And thank you for coming out tonight. Um, we're excited to just tell you a little bit about a concept we have for a new housing development in Putney. We're calling it Putney Landing. And um, also, it includes the preservation of some existing affordable housing in Putney, um, which is the Noise House, which has been here for almost 20 years. Um, so we're going to talk about both of those um, tonight. So before I start, though, I want to introduce the members of our, our team that are here tonight. Uh, Pete Podgy, who's the Director of Housing Development for Wyndham and Windsor Housing Trust, and Bob Stevens, Principal with Stevens & Associates Engineering. So we'll all be doing a little piece of this um, presentation. So um, I thought, I'm going to turn out a light here um, uh, so we can see this a little bit better. I thought I'd start with just a, a few slides about Wyndham and Windsor Housing Trust, if um, you'll indulge me that. A lot of you know us, but um, this will um, give you, for those of you that may not, gives you a little introduction. So we can go to the next slide. Our mission, which is to strengthen the communities of Southeast Vermont through the development and stewardship of permanently affordable housing and ongoing support and advocacy for its residents. Um, so we celebrate our 30th anniversary next year. Uh, we got started in 1987, and it was really about the, uh, we were losing a lot of affordable housing and feeling like we needed to preserve what, what we had. Um, another big milestone for us was in 2011 when we expanded our region into northern Wyndham and Windsor counties and changed our name, became the Wyndham and Windsor Housing Trust. And to date, we've created or preserved the affordability of 846 homes and apartments throughout Wyndham and Windsor counties. So um, our residents include um, young people, um, retired individuals and couples, um, young people starting out, disabled adults, and working individuals and families. And th this is just a list. Our, our residents work all over the place. This is, this is a, an abbreviated list of where, where they work. And we started with actually a few of the Putney businesses that, um, that our residents work for. Um, these are a few of the themes of our work, um, which, is, which have included really improving housing conditions, uh, preserving historic properties, and also creating opportunities for Vermonters. So, and I just included a few slides of some, um, some of our housing. You're all, for many of you I think are familiar with the housing that's above the Brattleboro Food Co-op in Brattleboro. And this is in uh, Chester Depot, actually. We restored this building about two, uh, maybe three years ago. Uh, this Union Square in Windsor, pretty much in the downtown of Windsor. And this is Butterfield Common Senior Housing. There's actually we have uh, also some family housing and some for sale condominiums. It's all in a cluster uh, very near Mount Snow. So, um, and I would be remiss if I didn't show a few slides of the Laura Plants house. We're very, very proud of it. Uh, we opened it last August. It was, um, Laura Plants was the first female medical practitioner in Vermont. And the, um, she built the home, but it was later used by Wyndham College. Um, and um, we actually tried pr two or three times to purchase the building over a maybe 15 year period. And finally in 2014, we were able to purchase it. It had really deteriorated. And um, so we had to undertake a, a very extensive renovation. Um, you, if you can see the top left slide, we had to remove the foundation under the back of the building and, and restore that. Um, so it was a, a restoration of the interior and exterior. And so it is now provides 11 apartments. Um, 
occupied last August, and it's still fully occupied. And there's a few pictures on the next slide, a few pictures of the interiors. If you didn't get to come to the opening, the apartments are really, really quite beautiful. The one on the top is a three-bedroom that has two floors, so it's, it's quite beautiful. Um, okay, um, so we're going to move pretty quickly into an overview of, of what we're proposing. And I forgot to say at the beginning, we're going to have lots of time for questions, but you know, you can at the end, but feel free if you want to interrupt, that's also okay. But this project would involve the acquisition of two parcels. One is the, the current site of Newman Hall, um, which is 48 Old Depot Road. Um, that's what we're calling Putney Landing. And then the Noise House on 52 Kimball Hill. And the Newman Road site, um, Bob's going to talk more. Help, I think there's a locator map and all of that. Um, but it's about 5.6 acres. Um, and it's really just south of Curtis's, just behind. Curtis's Barbecue, and we were approached by the current owner about a year ago about a, a potential sale. So we've been exploring this for a little while. Um, and then, of course, many of you know about um, the Noise House, a very significant historic building, uh, I think the original home of John Patrick Noise. It's John been Humphrey Noise. John Humphrey Noise. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. That, is that the father? No, that's no. the... That, that was, a, that is, okay. He's the perfectionist. Oh, all right, all right. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Father. That's ah. He grew up there. Okay, okay. So it's, it's been used, it's been eight single rooms with shared common areas, affordable housing. It's been owned by Putney Cares for all these last 20 some years. Um, about two years ago, Putney Cares decided that um, they would prefer to focus on the services they're providing and, um, and would like to, um, and, but really hoped that it would be preserved. So, um, so that's, um, that's the noise house portion of the project. So I think I'm going to turn it over to Bob now. So thank you. Um, this is just an overview of the site for Putney Landing to get folks sort of oriented and, and explain a little bit about it and we'll sort of zoom in. So this is Putney Landing Road. You can see the co-op located here, uh, Rod's Mobile, Curtis's Barbecue, and then Depot Road back here. So Newman Hall, the way that you get there now is down the end of Depot Road in this, this sort of uh, small dirt road that's located uh, there. The property that, uh, actually I think it goes all the way down here and it butts uh, Curtis's, we're sitting here, for folks who don't know where the fire station is, and there's a, there's a transmission power line, which is sort of relevant, that cuts right through the site there. Um, I, I think a couple of things as we started looking at how best to utilize this site, we realized that um, there's a total of 18 units in this uh, complex and that the existing access would be difficult to put all uh, that traffic through there. Um, so we looked at trying to bring the main access off Putney Landing Road. So this is a, really a new entrance that would cut up that bank and bring you to uh, parking here. But we also wanted to keep this access as a secondary emergency vehicle access as well as the pedestrian connection. So people who want to walk can basically use this as a trail that it exists and walk down deeper road. And, and then if you wanted to do a complete loop, we're trying to really look at a separate pedestrian connection that brings you back to the intersection so you can get on the sidewalk system into the village. Um, we're trying to understand how people can get in and out of here by uh, walking. Let me go to the next slide, Peter. So this is a, a blow up of the concept. Um, again, so south facing, it's sort of gently sloping land coming in this direction. Th these clearing limits are essentially what's there now. There's a little bit of clearing out on the back side, but it ends up being a um, sort of a, a little enclave um, uh, development of 18 units sort of now organized around this common. We often, when we look at building new units, um, look for trying to create some sense of public space, sort of front doors where people can meet their neighbors as sort of semi-public space, and then private space out the back. And all of these units sort of have those components. You've got really a, a really nice uh, courtyard to organize the buildings around, uh, private uh, space in the back, and then, and then sort of tight front doors. 
There is a community uh, sort of building on the end of this, which houses um, a central heating plant. So these would be new buildings that are high performance buildings with um, very high thermal envelopes and air sealing and moisture control and all heated from a biomass uh, wood chip plant in that building uh, that, that serves the entire complex. Um, other uh, uh, components, again, there, you know, there's a bunch of utility things just to say that we have been thinking about how to incorporate uh, taking the runoff from roofs and sidewalks to somewhat clean and bring that into a rain garden and ultimately the parking area gets you know, cleaned up as it goes through grass line swales and then mitigated through for peak runoff before it actually goes back into the ditch along Putney Landing Road. Um, again, you know, emergency vehicle access, these, this geometry works out. We've been having some initial conversations with VTRANS about site distances and it all looks like it's working out pretty well, as well as initial conversations with the fire chief to see you know, what are their needs and their issues about getting in and out of the site. Um, any questions about the site before I go on? Yes. What's on the site currently? Uh, Newman Hall is on the site. It's a building that sort of sits here. I've not, I've not been in it, but I understand there's a basketball court in there from Wyndham uh, College when it was originally built. So that's it's a. There was some photographs early on. We can back up to those if you'd like to see. But other than that, it's a it's an open field really, um, south facing open field. <coughs> Okay, let's go to the next line. So um, this is, uh, so S2 Architecture out of Shelburne is doing the architectural design. Um, as we said, and this is an elevation of what those buildings would look like. Most of them are townhomes, uh, townhomes, yeah, two-story um, units. Some of them are flats because uh, there's some ADA units mixed in. Um, and there's a variation you can see of sort of roof heights and pitches to kind of break the massing up. Um, this is a view from sort of the site parking looking into that courtyard and the buildings on two sides kind of framing the opening. Um, schedules and permitting. So like uh, many projects that are on uh, sort of you know, new construction, there's a whole process that we're, we're really very early in the process now. We've gotten a site, we've done some preliminary studies, we're working on cost estimates, there's some funding development going on. And assuming that all of that is, works out, that the funding uh, uh, piece is viable, uh, we'll be starting on final design, uh, we hope, next month. Uh, and then within a month or so, starting the local permitting process. This will go through the town. There'll be public notice for abutters to comment through the uh, uh, town DRB approval process, as well as Act 250 at the state. So there's really two levels of permits. Yes? Could you go back one slide? Sure. Yeah, that one. How can a moving van that might bring furniture or something yeah. get to that north yeah. place? Yeah, you know, we've had a lot of conversations about that. You know, should we pull that back and is that too far to walk? So one of the things that will be incorporated as this gets developed, we often allow and build sidewalks so that for on an occasion, you know, you can drive a moving van in or you can drive a uh, fire truck over that to get closer. Um, but if not, um, again, you know, they'll basically have to sort of roll it up the sidewalk to get into those back units. And that's, that's an inconvenience, you might say, but it's also a trade-off. Uh, you know, we ended up, we, if you see a lot of these types of developments, um, you know, to solve that, you end up with the buildings kind of lining up on the parking lot and you don't end up with these kinds of really nice common areas. So in the, in the discussions of different alternatives, I think it was really decided that, um, that pulling it back and creating that courtyard would be would be an advantage. Um, yeah, good question. Any other questions? Yes. No chance of getting pulled over take. There, there might be. Although I, I think these chance days, what? what's what that? The question. The solar, solar, solar. Photovoltaics on, on the property. Actually, you know, there it's close to the tree line, but there's leftover property and. I think um, you know the resources that are being spent from an energy standpoint are really trying to drive home the envelope right. and, and the fuel source, and then um, you know district uh, photovoltaic is really the direction that most people are going these days, rather than uh, building it into the. Uh, uh, I think there was some grant sources for. Am I? I mean, I'm confusing with another project about the heating plant for the, the biomass yeah, transfer bi sources. Biomass, yeah, biomass, but not necessarily for the photovoltaic. I think it. I think. We're thinking that maybe in the future um, there might be room on the site to to site um, solar panels. Yeah. Um, um, 
but probably for the initial phase, it would not be included. Mm -hmm. Like we said, we were sort of focused more on getting a really tight envelope and good windows and, and, um, and then the uh, pellet boiler. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're probably not allowed to put panels under the power cut, right? No, the yeah. power company has some pretty significant restrictions. Yeah, yeah, true. Well, what did she say? The question was, was can we put improvements under the power lines? So the, there's a fairly wide right of way for the transmission lines. It's actually here and here. This whole area on the south side is is um, uh, is uh, it does have a right of way. Um, not that you couldn't, but it would be pretty tough, I think, to, to get that through their review and approval process. So the town did seem to get a parking lot under it, but that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. That back building faces south, does it not? This this faces south. Yes, this is actually. You see the north arrow here. So south is in this direction, <coughs> down down the page. So if you were to put standing seam roofing on that back building. Then you could add PV very easily. Yeah, possibly. Possibly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, Josh. Bob, I think you said chip boiler and Tommy said pellet. Oh, I yeah. Pellet. About pellet right? I probably pellet. said chip. I just pellet. Yeah. 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 yeah, thank you. Okay, so next slide. So what we were talking about uh, scheduling um, and the permit process. So we would expect that probably by summer um, that we would be before the DRB, there will be a warning and notice in the paper, and then a butters will get a uh, notice for that. And then the Act 250 process is another state uh, scale environmental review that will also have a warning uh, period and, and potentially a public hearing if people request that. Um, so sometime between now and fall, those hearings, if those wanna, people want to attend to keep your eye out uh, for that. Um, and then, um, uh, uh, you know, at some point, we want to talk about uh, timing for funding. I actually don't know what, when we're thinking we'd actually go to well, construction. most of the appli funding applications would be, would be going in this spring. Yeah. Um, and, and by September, October, we would know about most of the funding. And, you know, this could potentially, we're going to talk about the noise house component, but this could potentially go into construction winter of 17, starting with the noise house. Obviously, you probably wouldn't start with the new construction in the middle of the winter, but it could potentially go into construction next winter. Yeah. Um, right. Is there anything else about the buildings that we want to share about these buildings? Uh, I don't know, Peter, do you have anything else about the buildings? I, mean, uh, no, I think you did a, yeah. a good job. I mean, we're, they're looking at a board and, bat, board and batten siding on the outside of the buildings. Um, um, a, a, a good substantial building envelope that's well insulated. So those are, those are probably the key features, I think. What's the largest apartment? It's about 1,150 square feet. There's, there's two three-bedroom apartments. Oh. Um, and they're, they're quite um, generous. Um, and then there's, an, uh, we have a actually, breakdown. Uh, the actually, there, there it is. Two, three bedrooms, 11 two bedrooms, and then five one bedrooms. Yeah. And, uh, how many are those accessible? Um, I think two are fully accessible. Um, and then there would be some adaptable. What about elevators? No, no because others. these are, um, this is not a building with interior corridors. These are, everybody has a front and a back door. Um, and if you, some of the, some of the apartments are flats, meaning they're all on one floor, mm -hmm. they would be accessible. But the townhouses are, you have two stories. And there's really no way to make a, a townhouse that's, you know, for one family. Um, access, you know, accessible, which is why we have the flats. Right. <laughs> Another reason why we have the flats. Yeah. All right, Peter. Are you next? Oh, more Good question. Yes. Hi. Are there uh, basements in these structures, or are they going to be? It'll be a slab. Yeah, slab on grade. 
So no basements. But we will we'll have a, a some kind of a storage shed on the on the outside. Uh -huh. We're planning on little patios in the back and probably separating the because we have like a lot of stuff. All our stuff now is underneath our back porch because our landlord wouldn't let us leave it in the basement. Uh -huh. So it's under our back porch in our apartment. I'm not uh -huh. sure who the landlord is, but uh -huh. yeah. Uh, we had to do that. Unfortunately, there are. So. Yeah, basements are very expensive. <laughs> yeah, expensive and moisture issues and some other challenging. So. But to that point, is there storage for, a, for the unit, for the residents? We'll, I'm sure we'll design in individual storage units. Yeah. yeah. Yes. What would be the parking of this? I'm going to back up a couple of slides. So the parking is, is out here. So when you drive up, um, and then this is parking on two sides, and then you'd walk to your units. Uh, there's some handicapped parking that's closer to the handicapped units. Okay, any other questions on this one? Yes? Well, I think it's important that you point out that when Winter Windsor takes over a project, they deal with the plowing, they deal with the uh, maintenance, they deal with the uh, upkeep. And I think that's so important, and for people to know that's incorporated in the yeah. rent. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Thank you. That's correct. Yeah. Will all these be rental units, or? Yes. yes. They are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is the road going up from, um, <clears throat> I guess that's the Pantney Landing Road. Yeah. Is that fairly steep? It's quite steep if you stand there and look up. So yeah. the reason that this car, it does carve into the hillside and then traverse the slope. We sort of have a maximum slope that we can traverse, um, you know, somewhere. So it won't be steep in its final grade because of the size vehicles that we have to get in. But we've got some earthwork to do to get that in there. Yeah. yeah. It is all sands and silts, so that so soil is pretty workable. So, yeah. And you said that, that V-Trans sounds like it's amenable to having a curb cut there? Yeah, we've already talked with uh, the person who reviews curb cuts, and you know, a lot of that is, has to do with how far you can see, how close it is to other intersections, and it seems to fall within all of those guidelines. So we'll be getting a permit the from old that. Road came out? Uh, the old road is actually a little further down the hill. Oh, uh, it's slow, quite but steep, but you can see how somebody yeah, cut up a little woods road there. Uh, this is pulled up the hill. Every every foot you go up the hill, you get a little higher, so it shortens this the length of that road as well. Um, so yeah. Okay. So we're going to talk a go little to, bit about the next uh, portion. Go ahead. Yeah. So now, um, as we were talking about earlier, the noise house is already. Uh, being used as affordable housing in Putney, and that's part of Wyndham and Windsor's mission is to uh, conserve affordable housing. So when Putney Cares approached us uh, with the idea of taking it over, uh, we were pretty amenable to that as well as you know doing upgrades in the building. So currently Noise House has eight what's called single room occupancy apartments. There are eight private rooms, uh, then with a common living space, a common kitchen. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. oh, no, okay. Uh, but so we're going to uh, when we go in and do our, our renovations, we're going to keep three of those single room occupancies, uh, but also convert it to four one, full one bedroom apartments with their own kitchens, their own bathrooms, their own private apartments. Uh, so you know the purpose of of taking over the noise house, as we said, is we're preserving affordable housing in Putney. It's a it's a pretty valuable. Uh, asset that Putney has right now in its, its affordable housing market. Uh, and also we'll be able to uh, preserve the historic aspect of the building, which is uh, another uh, important thing that, that we like doing, especially if we can come into to older buildings like the Laura Plans House or, or the Noise House. And then we'll create a mix, as we said, of, of the one bedroom units. Um, so I think then, that's... Yeah, and that's, that's what we're doing at the Noise House. There's a, a very limited uh, renovation uh, we're going to be we're not going to be doing a lot of uh, exterior work just fixing up what's needed very limited site work um, you know defining maybe the parking area a little more and then working with Putney cares because they're going to keep their uh, they have what's they call their activities bar and on site where they will be uh, you know staging their meals on wheels and their, their other programs that they run so we'll be still be working closely with them 
What will happen to the residents who are living there now while you're doing this work? Uh, the residents that are living there now, we temporarily relocate them uh, during renovation. And then uh, once the project is done, uh, they can either decide if they like where we've relocated them. We'll relocate them, you know, among our existing unit or our existing apartments that we have uh, around the area. And if they prefer to stay in those apartments, you know, they can do that. Or then we can also work on returning them to the noise house. I, I noticed on Old Depot Road, th uh, those 11 units, that five families came back right. to yes. that housing mm -hmm. and uh, others stayed where they were. Right. Or, you know, right. I was so grateful to know that they were a priority to come back to the Yeah, yeah. everyone yes. is always offered an, a, 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 an apartment back in the building. Mm -hmm. And um, many come, some choose to do something else. All right, so um, one more question. Oh, oh sure. Oh, yes. There are an increasing number of activities in the uh, activities barn there. Are there any implications for the use of that barn? in terms of your changes or not? The barn is going to remain the property of Putney Cares. They're going to be operating the activities barn fully. So. When, you, when you say, are there any implications, do you mean things like parking or? Well, I was wondering. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's not easy because it's a tight site. But some of the people that live in the noise house don't have cars. Some do, so there will be some, a few spaces reserved for those people, but I think the reality is when there's an activity in the barn, I think people come and park where they can, um, so, and that will continue. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not really sure there's a good way around that, but we already have, we're actually, we have eight rooms now, and we're going to seven ap apartments. Seven, so we're not increasing density. Um, so I think it, sh it shouldn't be that different from what currently exists. Uh, one other thing. I noticed that over the years, rarely has there been a woman living there. And I realized one day when I talked with women who don't want to live there, and it is, they just don't want to share the bathroom. With, mm. And that's understandable. If you're in a commune, that's one thing. Right. In a situation like this, so I'm really grateful for that idea of putting in apartments. Yeah, the first floor apartments here will be, I mean, they'll all be really nice, but I think having the um, activities barn right there and being on the first floor, I think they'd be great apartments for someone that needs a first floor and, um, and, and maybe, you know, the services that are right there on site. So um, it could be a really nice combination. Will they be handicapped accessible? Yes, yes. there's a ramp. There's a ramp. So they will be. Right. Mayor is mentioning that there currently is a woman living happily in the nice house. <laughs> well, actually, she's been gone for the past few months. Yeah. We've had to live there when she's in town. <laughs> well, she's been gone because she's been visiting uh, her sons and their families in Florida and California involving the arrival of help, helping to care for a couple of newborns. Absolutely, and we're glad for that now, aren't we? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think you said that currently the noise house residents are, it's a, there's an age limit or that it's for elderly, which I didn't realize, so I'm curious how the, the new um, you know, criteria will mesh with that or not. Um, noise house originally when it was conceived, it was conceived as elderly shared housing. Over the years it really evolved into more of a mix. I mean, partly because maybe there wasn't as much demand as they thought, but also partly I think they realized that it was helpful to have a mixed age group. Um, um, so it has been more a mixed age group, and it will not be designated elderly. It will be open to anyone. The current residency of Noise House is one age 55, one age 60, everybody else 60, or ranging 65 to somewhere in his mid 80s. He won't say. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, so that, that's uh, our plan for the noise house, and we'll continue on with the, the Connie will go over the housing need in Putney, which Okay. So Putney, the Putney community's done a, a, a really pretty has done fairly well meeting the need for senior housing, um, and that's largely um, due to Putney Meadows and Putney Cares. Um, um, but the only affordable family housing currently in Putney 
is, are, the, are six units at Laura Plant's house. The other five units at Laura Plant's are actually one bedrooms, so they're not appropriate for families. So really all that Putney has for affordable family housing are those six apartments at, the, at Laura Plant's house. So um, I looked at some of the statistics for Putney. You've got about 360 renter households in Putney uh, with a total number of people, you know, give or take, uh, 677 renters. Um, and the median renter income is about $34,726. So just remember that with the median, that means half your renters earn less than that amount. Um, so if you can go on to the next slide. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about a concept called the housing wage. Some of you might be familiar with it. But the housing wage is what you need to earn in order to afford a modest two-bedroom in your community. So in Putney, the housing wage is right here. $18 is, you need to earn $18.69 an hour to afford a modest two-bedroom apartment in Putney. And take a look at, these are all common uh, occupations statewide and what they pay. Um, so you have uh, many, many people um, that don't earn $18.69 an hour. If you've got two minimum, if you've got two wage earners in the household, it's easier, even if two minimum wage jobs could be combined to get to that $18.69. But almost half of the renters in Vermont are single. Almost half. It's about 48% of the renters in Vermont are single. So those people are only going to have one wage. So that's really, that's, Oh, that's the big part of the problem, uh, Josh. I just want that number on the last slide, the thirty-four thousand. Mm -hmm. That's median household income. That's median renter household so, income. It, right, but in individual Putney. or household household. Household. Yeah. Okay. Household income. In Putney. <laughs> so um, one thing I, you know, if you take this eighteen sixty-nine an hour uh, times forty hours, that's about thirty-nine thousand a year. So that's what you need to afford an apartment. Your median renter makes, well, the median renter earns 34000 and half of the renters earn less than that. So this is the problem. Um, OK, we can go on to the next slide. So we did a market study in preparation. We just wanted to know, is this needed? What is the need? Um, it was done by uh, someone named Doug Kennedy Advisors and um, just published just in January. He basically estimated the rental vacancy rate to be about 3.2, 3.4%. When he was looking, there were 10 apartments available in January, um, which actually s strikes me as a high number. But you never know. That varies from month to month. But 5% is considered a vacancy rate, a healthy vacancy rate, where you can look in the paper, there's a lot of choice. Um, 3%, um, you know, what happens when a market tightens up like that is lower income families have a harder time competing because a landlord might prefer to, to rent to someone that has more wherewithal or income. Um, so the affordable housing vacancy rate is less than 1% which really means that the only time there's a vacancy is when a unit turns over and then it's immediately taken and it's full. So it's less than 1%. So we have a very tight market. So basically, some of his conclusions were the demand for affordable housing exceeds your supply in Putney. There's only six affordable family apartments in the Laura Plants house. Um, the demand for small one-bedroom apartments is particularly strong in Putney, he pointed out. Um, and he concluded that if we were to build this, the development would be rented up two to three months of opening. Um, actually, Laura Plants, at the time we opened, was fully rented up. So, um, but he said he felt within two to three months it would be rented up. We can go on to the next slide. Yes? I have two quick questions. One is a waiting list at Laura Plants House. Do people waiting list? I believe we keep a separate waiting list for that, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure. People, when they apply, they indicate if there's a building they want. So I believe there is a separate waiting list, and we have a modest waiting list for, for that building. And the second one, will these units be open to people? 
people other than Putney residents? They will be. We can't restrict it to Putney, but what I will say, and, and this has happened in every community that we've built, every rural community we've built in, Algiers and Guilford, Dover, is the people in this community are going to know it's being built, and they're going to be the first ones to sign up. Um, so that's what happens. And I can tell you at, um, e, um, Edie, uh, Evie said this, um, that, that um, when Laura Plants opened, six of the residents moved back. One person that moved in had a job in Putney, had been working in Putney, and had not been able to locate an apartment he could afford. So that made seven. So that left four that in the end, it was a mix of people. One person from Dummerston. The other four were a mix. So, but clearly everyone in this community would know and would have the opportunity. We would start our marketing here, put up posters. So it, that's, that's, you, that's usually the way it, it works. The third one, on, on one level, you're saying the most popular size apartment is for a single person, let's mm -hmm. say a one bedroom. Uh -huh. And then you're saying, but there's, and there's only six family sized units. Well, it's now, really... So, so you're, you're doing a little of both, but how do you come up with the numbers? Well, it really is both. I mean, statewide, we have a lot of single renters. So there is a big need for one bedrooms. And we'll have, for the total project, we'll have five, nine nine one bedrooms and three SRO rooms for the whole project. And then I guess it was, it was 11 two bedrooms and then two three bedrooms. We always try to have a couple because you've got some bigger families. So it's a balancing act. I'm not sure there's a real formula for it, but we did feel like it was important since there was such a shortage of affordable family in Putney that we needed to create some family apartments. But it is very true that statewide, and, in every, and it's true in Brattleboro as well, there are a lot of single renters. Is it, when you say single renters, do you include single parents? No, that would be a family. Okay. That would be considered. And a, a one bedroom isn't necessarily limited to a single occupant. Though, no. Is it? Yeah. No. Okay. Could be a couple. Yeah. And, and is it true that Wyndham County is the oldest uh, county in the state in terms of population age wise? Isn't, yes, isn't that's that right? True. Okay. Yeah. And, and, one of the oldest states and the, the other thing, is this a statistic I made up, or is it <laughs> that, <laughs> that um, the study I heard that Putney, Putney area is short 90 units? Where did I hear that as a statistic? That people who work at the co-op work these places around, right. even at Landmark and, uh, and Putney School, maybe not as much as Putney School, have to drive to Keene, they drive to Hinsdale, they drive to Alstead. Now, where I got that, I do not know. Yeah, I, I didn't come across a statistic okay. like that, but that doesn't mean it's not the case. It, it, that, that was from that, you do I'm know pretty that. sure, from that first study that was done um, back in whenever that was, 2008, 2009, something like that, um, that that was the... That was it. That, and well, it, it was... I, I wouldn't say it was exactly 90, but it was over 80, less than 100, I think. So yeah. you're right in the right ballpark. But it was pushing 100 units that was And that was needed. through, I think, our, us informally interviewing bigger employers in Putney and them yeah. telling us how many of their employees live out, out of town. Uh, I, think that was, I think that was part of a study that it was also might have study. been. I think that was done by... Kennedy also, actually. Oh, okay. It may have been done by Kennedy or John Ryan. Did he do John a study? Ryan John Ryan, Ryan may John have done Ryan's. it. Yeah. Um, that doesn't surprise me, that number. I just yeah. I just don't have it. that one. <laughs> I can't call that up. It was in one of the studies. Yeah, I know. I didn't make it up. All right. But the other thing I want to say, for those who are here, we're talking about rental, but I know people who went from Wyndham, Windsor, who didn't have very much, and one who was disabled and the other was working, they were able to get a house through Wyndham Windsor because they went through that training, which is fabulous, and if you know young people, you tell them to take that training program. Was it a weekend? Um, it's um, smart start to home ownership. Right? And then there are state and federal programs that help them out. So a lot of people think about just renting, right. but ownership is possible. Right, mm -hmm. right. What's the program? 
What is the program? It's through Wyndham Windsor. Well, we do both education and counseling for homeowners, and um, we have a couple classes we offer for first-time home, bu home buyers. Um, one of them is called Smart Start to Home Ownership, and it's, it's an eight-hour class. Sometimes we divide it up into two days. Sometimes we do a whole Saturday, but they're offered throughout the year, and you can go on our website and um, check out the... And then, yes, there are subsidies that you can access to help purchase. Well, it helps uh -huh. these people get a place in Springfield because she had to work for the for the state police. But the, the, I know there's housing that you've gone, gone to you all for Bellows Falls and Dumberston, and I don't know about Putney. Right. Well, if anyone is, is interested in learning more, the um, <clears throat> Elizabeth Bridgewater from Windsor, Windsor, who's the home ownership right. director, is coming to our um, um, affordable housing committee meeting Monday night, this coming Monday night at 7. And she, she is w one of two guests we have, and she'll be talking about at least a couple of those programs if people are interested. Meeting's open to anyone. <laughs> Town Hall, 7 o'clock. So I did want to show you some of the proposed rents. And what you have on the um, left are Putney Market rents. This, these came out of Doug Kennedy's study. Um, and on the right, what, they don't totally match up because he's got efficiencies and we've got the single room, which is not the same thing. Um, but it can give you a sense most of our rents are anywhere from 250 to 800 you know, $700 below market rents. It just depends on the size. The, the, the um, differential tends to be bigger on the larger units. Um, but, um, but this is an, an idea of the rents. And we're also hoping that there will be some um, project-based Section 8 so that somebody would, that, that cannot afford these rents would have an even lower rent. But, but, we, but the rents will be in this ballpark. That's what's being proposed. And these include heat and hot water. And are you able to keep the rents that low because of some subsidies from the state and the federal government, or are you just you're not making the profits other people are making? Or you're well, it's there? we do it the way that we do it. We we raise enough money so that we can close without a mortgage. Mm -hmm. um, we build. We use quality materials so that our uh, our buildings are easy to maintain. Um, and um, what was the last thing you said? Because that was also true. No um, pardon me? No profit. No profit. <laughs> <laughs> I knew the <laughs> There's no profit. <laughs> Is this some kind of socialist talk here? <laughs> <laughs> but, but the only ones that are getting subsidies are the Section 8. Is that right? That's an operating subsidy. Right. So um, um, we would love it. I don't want to say we would love it if we could get a few operating subsidies for this so that because with a section 8 you can subsidize the rent down to a hundred dollars um, it's 30 percent of someone's income section 8s are very very hard to come by these days it's really uh, it's tough so we, we will try we'll um, and and we're pretty good at what we do and so we'll try to do that, um, but it's not a guarantee, and we at least can do these very much below market rents, right. and then we'll try to have a handful for people that are quite low income and need a deeper subsidy. I, th I think part of the answer to your question, Alan, also is just the fact that the construction is subsidized so heavily uh -huh. through various different venues that, mm -hmm. that those upfront costs are significantly lower. Uh -huh as well as when you build as tight an envelope and make it as efficient as it is, your cost of operation is significantly lower. So, so they're, they're subsidized in a different way. Mm -hmm. do, do you do any screening um, in terms of income of an individual so that somebody who's actually re reasonably well off and wants a, an apartment, is he excluded in favor of low income people? In other words, what about, do you keep high-income people out? <laughs> Mostly, yes. <laughs> because what, we were, what we're talking about is that um, Putney has a lot of, it really doesn't have affordable housing. That's what's missing. We've got a lot of housing for people that have higher incomes, and we don't for affordable. However, we are, I think there's two apartments in here that we're thinking will go up to 100% of median income. 
So that might be for a family of three. I I don't I, I have it in my file. That might be as much as fifty thousand. Most people I would say that would live here would be in the twenties <coughs> or maybe thirties. Mm. But there'll be a couple apartments that that might go as high. Um, at, well, it would go up to median income, and and that's okay. dependent on family size. But my question is, right. do you screen for that? Let's. I mean. Oh do yeah. We, we do have income requirements. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we check income if that's what you're asking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And how does that work if somebody moves in and they're making twenty, and then they get a bump to a eighty thousand dollars salary? Are they required to move out? <laughs> um, no. Um, they move it, out quick. It's it's a complicated answer, but um, usually it, it, we use tax credits to to develop these projects. And I think what we have to make sure is the next opening. Is, is a person that's eligible, but they do not have to move. Um, you know, maybe there's a built-in incentive if you've won the lottery to move. But, um, yeah. So, next slide, please. Um, so, why this, this is the last slide, and then any we can answer any more questions. Why this site? Um, we really, when we first saw this site, we were really drawn to it. It has a little bit of a rural feel. Um, it's surrounded by trees. You don't really see the site from the road. Um, and yet, it's right on the edge of the village. It's got municipal infrastructure. It's got the water and sewer. That's, that's kind of rare to get, find a little piece of land that has water and sewer. Um, and it's walking distance to all these great amenities, the co-op, the general store, the library. Um, um, the apartments will create some great opportunities, we believe, um, and help address a proven demand. Um, we think that Putney Landing with the townhouses is really residential scale, which would fit in the community. It's, this is not a big building with interior corridors. Um, it's, everyone has a front door and a back door, a patio. Um, so we feel like it's a residential scale that will fit. Um, we, um, um, we think it's great that more Putney residents um, will have the opportunity to live in a central location, uh, a walkable location. Um, the noise house, we're, um, we love the idea that it continu can continue to be an affordable housing resource in the community and also that its historic value is, is preserved. So those, those are some of the reasons why we, we feel this is compelling. But with that, I'll answer. We can answer any other questions you thought of. Yes. Not really a question, but a comment. I'm glad you mentioned shopping, the library, the co-op, general store, and other amenities. But mention the school and the number of students at the Butley Central School that lead the family food bags on weekends and vacation times. I really hope that we can find more affordable housing for young families. The school population is shrinking rapidly. Right. Uh, Act 46 is on the horizon, which I don't think is a very good idea, but that's yes. another issue. Yeah. But the point is, we need to have affordable housing for young families <coughs> who have young school-aged children. It's a fabulous school, and we're, we're letting it down. Okay, that's a good point. I know when um, we opened Laura Plants, we actually did import a few p kids to Putney, I heard. <laughs> there were, of those four units, there were none Putney. One was a family with children, so. We have the light for preparing for Oh, turn on the light. Oh, yeah. In fact, how many, I mean, I, I just haven't done the math, so <coughs> how many children does the whole project allow for? I mean, have you? I brought an answer to that question. Well, it's not a, you know, it's not it's possible. possible. It's not a definitive answer. Yeah. But what I can tell you is we've, you know, we've had a couple um, buildings we've built in other communities, and, and we have lower plants. But we, we looked at Algiers housing, which, was, which is 17 units, one unit less. And when um, we opened, uh, three school-aged children moved in. So that wasn't too many, actually. Um, the Laura Plants house, when we opened, five school-aged children moved in, um, and that's 11 units. So th that's all we can go on is what's happened in, the, in other instances. So, you know, three to 
six or seven kids in 18 units, or four to seven, that might be that might be a, a reasonable estimate. And it should be noted too; those are uh, elementary and middle school age children. Yeah. Uh, we didn't count; I believe we didn't count high school children. Is that correct? Right, because we were thinking about what kids would go to your local schools. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Oh. Other questions? Josh? Can you address the topic of how this will affect property taxes? I mean, there are property taxes paid on that parcel currently. Mm -hmm. What the implications would be for this? Uh, yeah, we ran some numbers. So based on the current uh, list, uh, the current uh, appraisal in the grand list, uh, I believe on Putney Landing, they pay about 5300 in taxes a year. Uh, at the end of the day, once uh, our Putney Landing site is built, it'll be it'll be about sixteen thousand five hundred. So there will be a, a net gain uh, in the taxable value of the property. That's just an estimate, Josh. I mean, yeah. there's a whole statewide formula, but yeah. we we ran the formula with what we know now, and that's that's what it looked like. Thank you. All. Thank you all for the presentation. Oops, Maggie's on. Um, yeah, it, isn't it so that um, the, the community actually gains in um, aid to the school with, um, with an increased population? Yes. Wow, well, I that, am is not that, in. Uh, I can't answer you were that question. Board, Anna. Isn't that true that there's a, that this, the state makes a contribution per child? Per student. Per student. Yes, per so student. you've got certain a number of expenses that are just given. Yes, Whether yes. your population goes up or down, and since it's been going down, we need it to go up to increase that the amount of income that comes yeah. in and utilizes the property better. Right. Mm -hmm. So the infrastructure is there, the staffing is there, yeah. and so more, more children mean that it's more efficiently used. And, yeah. I guess it sounds to me like a win, win, win situation. Are there any drawbacks <laughs> that anybody's aware of that we should sort of bring out and put on the table? Well, I can't think of any. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think one comment that came up at a meeting we had previously um, that I think Eva was alluding to is Wyndham Windsor's ability to maintain these things beautifully. Um, that, that, in my opinion, would probably be the downside if there was any likelihood. I mean, we all saw what was happening to the Laura Plants House, for example, over years and decades. It just went downhill, downhill, downhill. These guys do an excellent job of maintaining these properties, so I don't think we're going to see that. In my opinion, that would be my fear of the biggest likely downside is that we get something here that then would deteriorate, but I don't think that's even a remote possibility. So, so it's another win. Another win. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's also the opportunity for anybody in this room to donate to Wyndham Windsor because <laughs> they do in this room donate to Wyndham Windsor to make sure that these projects are available for the rest of us. And I'm grateful for the way oh, and thank many you, people. Yeah. I know from this community have done it and continue to do it. So I'm grateful to you all if you have to be in this room, which I know you are. Thank you. Yes. I just have a question about how this meeting dovetails with what Josh and others on the town will do. I, I know a previous project in Baskerville went south, as they say, and we that support this will just wonder what the public input is in any of the steps that come before the town so that you know, keep it going. Oh, right. Um, Bob or, or Josh, I don't know which. Uh, my sense is just anecdotally from what I've been hearing um, is that because of the scale and location of this, that it's not likely to draw that kind of negative attention that Basketville did. Um, yeah. that, that by no means doesn't, I'm not saying that it won't draw any negative commentary or attention, but I think the likelihood of it being on that level is much less. As far as public input is concerned, that, I mean, through the DRB process, certainly in permitting initially, that will be the sort of most um, intimate, maybe, uh, location for people to, opportunity for people to 
um, give public comment as to specifics about it. And then if Act 250, yeah, if it needs an Act 250 right. hearing, then that, that sounds too. about right. And we've been fortunate to have PIP on both boards, so I think that that's been helpful for us to, to imagine if there would be issues. Well, yeah. We should also note, though, that the um, like, you speak up? like the other project, that this will also involve a select board approval of, um, of an approval. Um, CDBG. A CDBG uh, application by Wyndham Windsor. It has to go through the town. So that's one role that the Affordable Housing Committee is to advise the select board. Yes, this is great. <laughs> and that, <laughs> Do will it. Be, that will be obviously all our select board meetings are open, but um, that will be the topic of a select board meeting at some point. The approval of it, it's not really approval, but it's um, well, endorsement it, endorsement yeah. right. of um, a block their application for a grant, which would be probably the single largest funding grant for this project, or um, some, somewhere it close. It could be close yeah. to the yeah. yeah. I, I want. I mean, if, if it's all win win win, maybe I don't need to add you know any more wins. But um, <laughs> I did want to comment that the affordable housing committee, which was sort of developed after Basketville included both uh, proponents and opponents of the Basketville project and was an interesting mixed group of citizens of Putney. And we had an opportunity through a municipal planning grant to work with a professional planner and saw a number of other affordable housing sites in other communities. And when that process was done, we came, I think, all of us to understand that there's a clear need. I mean, you went over it here, and it's been reiterated in the town plan, which has been updated, and that's on the website for the town of Putney, the people on the left side. Um, but the several takeaways that we had was that one of the problems associated with Basketville was the size, and, and that, that that number of units at that location may not have been the best fit in, in the eyes of, of you know, people, some people in Putney. And, we had some recommendations that we have shared with Connie uh, from right after the, our study was done, um, and so far they're they're becoming um, they're coming true. Our, our our wishes, our wish list was to have properties in town rehabbed if at all possible. And the Plants House is an incredible um, mm. rehab of a property that really was starting to become a significant eyesore and a, a fire hazard. It was a real challenge to figure out what to do with that. It was, it, it was really problematic. So that was such a positive move and very consistent with the other projects that we had seen around the state that, that gave us committee members very positive um, uh, impressions. And the second was that the, the size. We, we imagined that a good project for Putney would be one in the village to take advantage of walkability and the services of the village and the infrastructure that's there. And something around 20 units is what we had talked about. I'm, I'm putting Lisa uh, for confirmation. But the, you know, so that was the size of the project that we imagined would be a good fit. When we saw other ones in other communities, they sort of felt like the right size. So to kind of reinforce that notion that, that, you know, though you, Connie, are, you know, taking the, the lead in this, um, it is turning out to be consistent with the desires of the Affordable Housing Committee well, in, 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 you know, following sort of yeah. the, what, what had been an unfortunate, you know, incident with the basketball project. Sure. So it's, in my sure. mind, it's a great win because the site is remarkable in its closeness to the village and it's, um, privacy and, and separation through screening. It's, it's unusual yeah, to have that. Really is. Um, and the size is the right size. And the need has never gone away. You know, the yeah. need, we've all acknowledged the need. So, so right. the need always exists, and this is great. So right. um, another plus. So yeah. this is maybe a few years too early to say this, but it sounds to me like the need is so great in Putney that uh, we will need more projects of this in the near future. Uh, so, love this one and think about another one. <laughs> <laughs> no, and we're, we're hopeful, Alan, that, that, you know, via the project at the Plants House and this, it'll be demonstrative of how positive an addition yeah. to, yeah. especially in a village setting, 
mm -hmm. um, something like this can be. So hopefully that will promote that yeah. aspect of it. I'd be curious to know, and be honest, how many people in this room know that we have affordable housing on Depot Road? Really, raise your hand. <laughs> I just was curious. <laughs> it's the choir. <laughs> thank you all for coming. Yeah, thank you.